how to use Twitter for developers. How can you use Twitter in 2017 to boost your career as a developer? I'll tell you right now, the best thing that I can think about for Twitter is that it's just another place to expose your personality. Guess what? In 2017, every job that you apply to, there's going to be a ton of other people that also want that same job. There's going to be a bunch of stacks of people just like you applying for all these different jobs as developers, as programmers. So how can you cut through the noise? Well, the best way, by far the best way, and I'm using my hands to like really drive home this point, the best way is to expose your personality, your unique and individual and specific personality to the world through various social media and website and online channels. The reason for this is that your competitive advantage, you, you have to understand competitive advantage, right? Your competitive advantage is, you know, by definition, your competitive advantage is something that's hard for other people to replicate. And that is your personality. Um, that's your interests, your passion, your enthusiasm, whatever it is about you, your personality is kind of like the overall thing that I'm describing as. It's all the individual character traits that make up you. That's what's so hard for your competition to replicate. And your competition is every other programmer applying to a job that you're going to be applying to as well. So the first thing that you really want to do is make sure that you're using Twitter and make sure you're using you know, LinkedIn and make sure you're using your website. You know, Go to dane.io if you want to see how I use my website to put my personality out there. Make sure your face is on Twitter. Make sure your bio is nice, it, you know, is it is um, accurate. Don't put like, I am the destroyer of worlds and stuff like this. This is fun for like before your career, acting that way and putting that type of stuff on the line. <laughs> Funny joke about the internship, have you ever seen it on the line? Um, Putting that type of language on the line, I see a lot of people do that on Twitter still, like funny bios and all this stuff. This is great before your career. But for but when your career starts and when you're trying to get off the ground, you can't do that. You have to become more professional, a little bit more. You don't have to become super professional, right? Become a more professional version of your personal self. You can look at my Twitter and my, my website. You can see I'm a professional version of my personal self. And that means I'm very personable, right? You come to my website, you see my face, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Even if it's not the most pleasant face in the world to look at, the point is you're personable. So you're a real person. Um, don't just have kind of like a black and white blog with a bunch of text. Make sure there's an about page. Make sure your your face is um, your face is there somewhere. A little bit about you and stuff like that. Now, since this video is about Twitter, I guess I should keep it specific. Um, what you want to do with Twitter is have your face on Twitter. Don't do landscapes or anything like that. Have your face. Make sure it's an okay photo. I mean, look at me. You could just t turn your phone around and take a photo with the window open, right? I mean. Who cares? Just make sure it's not the worst photo ever. Make sure it looks okay. You know what I mean? And what that means is make sure you're lit well. Make sure that there's a decent crop around your face. Um, you know, don't do like an upside down angle and all this stuff, right? Uh, just make it a pretty good photo. Um, and some of my photos have been super amateur. And even and some of my photos, and in fact, just to show you how photos don't matter at all, the photo that I had on LinkedIn when I got accepted to the position in the PIF Presidential Innovation Fellows, it was me uh, at a photo shoot doing like a funny, uh, hilariously stupid funny face. And it was like completely not serious. It was completely ridiculous. Um, and nobody else on LinkedIn had a photo like that. But the thing is that got me attention uh, <laughs> and that's probably, you know, a big reason as why, I, as to why I got that position, maybe because I stood out on LinkedIn, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. But the point is that you really want to have a photo. It can be a not super great photo. It can be, you know, a funny photo, but make sure that it's not, um, grainy. 
make sure it's not at a weird angle. It can be a funny photo, but mine was cropped well. It was lit perfectly. Um, it was a lot. It was aligned against the front of my face, so it was a funny photo, but it was it was perfect in in the sense of composition. So make sure you have a well, a well composed photo. Um, then your bio. So the bio, you really what you need to do here is, you know, again, don't be silly with this. In the bio, put the following. Here's how I construct a bio. The first thing is sometimes I'll even put like hi. You know what I mean? With an emoji. Because you want to be different. So always try to be different. So I'll, I'll be like, hi, emoji. On Instagram, I did that for a long time. And this bio technique applies to anywhere. So that's the first thing I do. Second thing is I put the job title of what I want next in life. So this is key. In the bio, I put the job title for what I want next. So in all my bios, right now, I'll give you a real example. In all of my bios, you'll see the words investor. I'm not an investor currently. I, I'm sort of an investor, and I'm obviously an investor in the public stock market, and I'm an investor in one private company, but I'm not really a true investor, right? Not really true investor. Um, but it's one of my goals. Right? It's something that I would like to achieve and want to achieve and will achieve. So in order for me to achieve that, the first thing I have to do is make myself believe that I am that. And one way that I do that is just by telling everybody in the world, hey, look at me, I'm an investor. Right? And it's not to say, look at how cool I am. It's to say, it's to help myself project out what it is that I want. Right? Project out what I want. So if everybody starts looking at me like an investor, people will start coming to me with deals. People will start bringing up topics that other people talk to investors about. And so this is what's so fascinating about this. So for you, change your Twitter profile. Be like, hi, with an emoji. Uh, then be like, I'm a front-end developer or back-end, whatever your goal is. Python developer, Ruby developer, PHP developer, whatever your goal is, put that there. I'm a blank or just put blank developer. So then what I do is you want to put your university. If you've been to a university or school, you can put your university be like formerly of and then put at your university or your school. And if you haven't been to a university, um, what you can do if you if you have not been to any university, what you can do is you can put aspiring and then put the at sign for a popular boot camp. So like aspiring Da Vinci Coder student or aspiring thinkful student or something like that. And the point here is just to show people that you're learning and you're serious about learning. Even if you don't aspire to go to any of these boot camps, just go ahead and put like aspiring boot camp student for some boot camp. And what that does is it just shows everybody, all the peers, all your peers on Twitter, they're going to come to your profile and be like, okay, he's one of me because I think I'm there. Trust me, there's a lot of your peers are going to these boot camps. So even if you're not, go ahead and put that you're an aspiring student because who knows, maybe you will. Who knows, right? So go ahead and put that you're an aspiring boot camp student. And again, that will help you network. This will help you network. Um, you can remove this in a couple of weeks. I would probably put this, if you're new to Twitter, I would put this up for the first couple of weeks or something like that, maybe even a month, until you get a little networking going on on your DMs and, and your app replies. Um, so the next thing that I put in the bio is kind of like some final thing. I always put like some final thing. And for me, I think one that I've used a lot is lover of readers and leaders, or I'll put lover of readers and then another emoji or just some some kind of thing. And what this last little bit does is it's kind of a glimpse into your personality even before the reader views your tweets. So your tweets are the the real exposure of your personality. But this little this last little bio line, it's kind of like a preview to your personality. So for you, you might be like um uh you know 
lover of algorithm design, you know, whatever, just some kind of thing about you. Like if, if you're not into math or science, maybe it's like lover of electronic music and you don't have to use my lover thing. You could just be like, you know, you could just write whatever, but it's about you. It's about your personality, some kind of little tidbit or some kind of thing. And keep in mind too, one concept is, you know, you're trying to capture attention. So with Twitter and with all these online channels that you use to put your personality on the line, I'm going to continue that joke forever because it's hilarious. Vince Vaughn, I, I love Vince Vaughn. Um, so if, as you continue to use all these channels, what you need to keep in mind is that really they're all sort of, they're all sort of the same thing in that you're trying to capture attention across them all, you're trying to capture the attention. And this could not, this could just be to say hi to somebody to network, to make a new friend. It could be to get a job. It could be uh, to help people. It could be for completely altruistic reasons. It doesn't have to be for any weird reason, right? It could be for completely altruistic reasons. Um, you know, you just wanna help people, so you wanna capture their attention. So we call this interruption marketing or interrupt marketing. Seth Godin talks about this a little bit in a couple of his books, and it's really interesting. So. It's, it's awesome if you can kind of put something in this last line here that is an interrupt. So for me, when I say lover of readers and leaders and then I have an emoji, number one, people usually don't see emoji in Twitter bios. Number two, there's rhymes. It rhymes and people that, it, it hits your dopamine a little bit when you hear rhymes. There's a lot of science that shows music is just nonstop triggering dopamine in your brain. So anything that associates to something that triggered dopamine in people, it's gonna trigger them when they see my stuff. So a little rhyme, whatever it is, right? It's why we love limericks. It's why we love fairy tales and all this stuff if they rhyme. If they rhyme. Um, so that's what I do. So find your own way to put like a little interrupt. So, you know, um, if you're into music or something like that and you want to show people like you're a front-end developer but you're also like a DJ, you might say, um, you know, your Twitter bio might be, hi, um, and then like some emoji that nobody's seen before or very often. Then you might put front-end developer, aspiring uh, Da Vinci Coder student or some kind of online boot camp or something like that student. Um, nightclub dj if you're a nightclub dj i don't know what it is whatever it is for you that is the most like shocking thing where people will be like whoa you're you know nightclub dj or even if you were like a plumber something very less exotic than a nightclub dj if you're a plumber or something like that and you want to become uh, a front-end developer it's almost interrupt marketing to literally just write that it's it's almost so strange um, so interrupt marketing is based on like, what is strange? What is interesting? What is intriguing? Stuff like that. So those are the emotions you're looking for, right? So this last sentence you might put, or you you might be hi emoji, aspiring front end developer and DaVinci coder student, currently plumber or something like that. People will be like, Whoa, <laughs> you know, it, so it's little things like that, that you can do that interrupt people and make and make them feel like, okay, well, I want to scroll down. And it really, I know I'm belaboring this point of like, well, we, ju we are putting all this effort into people just reading our bio. But, what, you know, this is the world we live in. This is the reality of the situation. You have to be this specific, you have to be this kind of focused on every little piece. Um, and you have to be way more focused than what I'm describing here. When I'm, I'm giving you an intro, if this is too much for you, you have problems. You have other problems than this. Nothing I'm saying can help you if this is too much because you have to put in, I, I've spent, you know, Twitter, I've probably gotten three opportunities that massively been, impacted my life from Twitter and they probably had to do with people seeing my bio and my tweets and then interacting with me and then the opportunity came out of that. And I probably have spent 10 to 20 hours on my bio, just thinking of phrasings and wordings, 10 to 20 hours, 10 to 20 hours, guys. So, you know, 
it's only the people that do that that really get the best rewards, that really get the best opportunities because other otherwise you're just kind of throwing shit up and being like, ah, maybe that'll work, maybe that'll work. You have to really spend the time and think about it. Um, and this is a vain example, a Twitter bio, but you can apply this mentality to anything, right? Like learning a single CSS attribute really well, you know, you might spend 20 hours just on that. So this can be applied anywhere, but we're talking about something kind of vain today, um, I realize. So again, just to wrap up this segment, we're running a little long. Twitter, I'm super passionate about Twitter. I love Twitter so much. Um, I really hope it never goes away. It's one of these services that I was using in 2006 and it's my, I always say it's my favorite thing online. Uh, and it still is. It's my favorite thing online. It's my favorite tool for networking, my favorite tool for, for being inspired by my mentors. I have a Twitter list of all my mentors and I review it daily. Um, it's the favorite thing. It's my favorite thing for checking out my peers, people creating their own businesses online and working as developers maybe during the day or doing podcasts as developers or YouTubes as developers. Like my peer group, I can check in on them, right? It's how I stay up to date on my competition. Twitter is how I do competitive research. I have a Hootsuite dashboard that shows me that I call competitive research and it's literally every bootcamp in the world and every YouTuber that does development, just a different timeline for each one. And I just scroll through and I'm like up to, totally up to date on everything all my competitors are doing. So, and you might be like, well, how are you, how is one of your competitors a bootcamp? I guess that's for a different video. That's a project coming down the road. Um, so that's, I guess, a little tease. But the point is, Twitter is an amazing tool that I think is vastly underrated by you, all developers, vastly underrated, vastly, vastly. Um, now that being said, it's still very difficult to get up and running with it. Um, it's difficult to do the bio. It's difficult to come up with tweets. It's difficult to think of what are you going to talk about? It's difficult to network with people. It's, it's difficult. So you really have to put in the effort, right? And I've, today I've given you a little snippet of how to do the bio. I think I want to do a completely different video later on how to tweet. How, how do you write tweets? What, do you, what should you think about when you tweet? Because today, I, I don't want to, this video to go any longer, but I really wanted to focus on the bio today and your picture, because again, that's the first thing people see, just like a book cover, it's almost the most important thing. The tweets are equally important, but secondarily equally important, if that makes sense. So what I would do is really focus on getting that bio right after you watch this video. So go ahead and comment below. Let me know that you're going to take action, that you're going to go to your Twitter. You're going to come up with a new bio. Also, link your Twitter in your, in your comment so that I can see your new bio. If you, if you put your Twitter in, in a comment here below, uh, you can just put your Twitter handle at like at your name. And what I'll do is I'll reply to your comment and I'll review I'll review your bio and I'll review your tweets. Um, I'll just give you a little, you know, maybe five sentence or something like that review of what I think of your tweets and bio, but at least have like 10 tweets and at least have a bio with a picture. It doesn't have to be perfect. You could have done the tweets right now. If you don't have a Twitter and you're watching this, set it up right now, make the tweets right now, make 10 tweets. And the reason I'm saying I'm asking for 10, even if you're brand new is because I want you to kind of think, like what it is that you're gonna tweet. And that's the hardest part. I need you to put in some effort. So go ahead, comment below after you've done that with your Twitter, and I will give you a mini review. And in a later episode, we're gonna talk all about how to actually tweet and how to expose your personality through your communication and how can you do that online. So I'll continue those videos in the future. Thanks guys, talk to you soon.